So hi, this is Dr. Priscilla Silveraj, a professor at Hudson Simmons University. We are here to talk about depressive disorder and bipolar disorder. Well, well let's begin first by looking at some numbers. Globally, it's found that almost 300 million people are affected by depression. If you have to give more precise perspective to this, think of the U.S. population in 2006. The whole U.S. population was 300 million. So if you can think of how the world, if you can pick the people with depression, you can fit them in to the U.S. That's how many people in the world across have depression. Men, women are twice more likely to be affected by depression than men. We'll talk a little bit more of why with research finds um this to be the reason uh, for more depression among women and uh, depression affects almost 20 to 25 percent of people above 18 years of age and if you think of past year one out of ten of adolescents within this age group of 16 to 17 have had some kind of major depressive uh, episode it's important to understand uh, what depressive disorder actually is. So it's some more like a group of disorders. It's an overarching umbrella term that includes a lot of different um, um, disorders within like major depressive disorder and uh, mood dysregulation disorder. Um, most of the common denominator in this case is how sad and empty and irritable and um, more dysfunctional the person feels um, or, the, or the person experiences who goes through a depressive disorder um, or, or depression. The symptoms include um, these, I'll, I, but I just wanted to show criteria from the DSM so you guys have a perspective of how we make the assessment uh, for um, this kind of disorder. So these are the ones that we have like listed of nine of which if the patient or the client is um, is reporting that the client experiences five or more of these, then we will say that the client actually is, is depressed after looking if it's not because of substances or other medical condition or not because of any other impairment. Um, um, and if that is causing significant impairment to other aspects of the life, the dysfunction aspect of it. And if they feel the same way for two weeks or more, uh, then we would say um, if the depressed mood is persisting and loss of interest is there. Uh, loss of interest would also be in terms of like not wanting to uh, get up from the bed or not wanting to go through the day as usual, not wanting to show up for work or for the school, um, not having... Um, pleasure for the activity that felt pleasurable before, not able to sleep, not able to eat, um, and feeling depressed all the time, feeling irritated, feeling very tired, uh, feeling hopeless, feeling worthless. So these are some of the some of the emotions that uh, or the symptoms that people who experience depression actually go through. So this probably gives you an idea of the wide range. Um, if in the previous one, if you click on this, the link here for the YouTube video um, is a very good example of, the, of a video where uh, a depression, a life of a person with depression is described. Um, and I really like the way they explain and put the, all the symptoms into perspective in the video. So I would encourage you to watch that. It would be in the description below. So let's first see uh, how unipolar and bipolar, we have heard of bipolar as a disorder, but let's see what it is. Um, if only one episode of uh, we have um, a depressive disorder and it ends and then if they are returning to the normal emotional state, it, that's when we call unipolar depression. But bipolar is when the client actually is experiencing episodes of mania, which we call the more hyperactive or heightened state of emotion and then has a lower state uh, which is depression so if there is an alternating that goes between these two states that's when we say the client may be um, qualifying for a bipolar disorder um, in based on 
uh, different symptoms they do exhibit. You can see if you are plotting it in the graph, kind of like a late status mania and kind of depression status at low state of mind. So people with um, normal state, if this is how they would be, um, you can see people with um, probably depression are more below, and pro pro people with bipolar would be one who would go up and then would come down at the bottom. So it's not where, um, uh, you know, it's always in one state of mind. Let's just uh, get a perspective of, um, you know, across different demographics, how is uh, depression? Just, uh, I thought this is interesting to see how race and ethnicity has an impact on the levels of depression. And, um, you know, this, the prevalence of major uh, depressive episode it was found that oh, to be highest among adults who reported that they had or they were like multi-ethnic um, or had multi-ethnic origin uh, which um, um, or were multiracial uh, two or more they were the highest in uh, in terms of prevalence so I thought that was kind of interesting for us to uh, increasingly have to, having to focus on people who don't really you know you can think to find them in different ways but yeah who do, or don't really um have a particular root or a um have a identity crisis you know you can think of it different ways but i thought that was really interesting um but yeah definitely here we do see females and males how that is um actually almost half different why um females score higher why do you think it is uh leave in the comments below of some of the reasons why you think and let's just talk a little bit about that reasons people found with the trauma that people women um since tend to experience more uh poverty was was considered this lower socioeconomic status was kind of more in women um women tend to ruminate more um but men tend to like attack a problem female so women tend to internalize that and think about it and more in terms of like they want to cry and uh, women do sh um, work with their emotions in a lot of ways um that men don't men do a uh, uh, kind of social withdrawal uh, more stereotypical but um men, men in general tend to do that so a lot of times women end up uh, reporting more depression and also experiencing more depression here and uh, what do you think about this whole special group of athletes increasingly we do hear a lot of news about how athletes report of mental illness and um, they talk in our service and advocate uh, and I do have a story here if you click on this it should take you to um, uh, uh, issue that came up um, a, a new um, conversation about people and um, uh, an athlete um, and how how important it is to know that they too are human and they have a greatest risk of one out of eight of us um, have a mental illness um, then think about how it's important here uh, to, to listen to the eight of uh, eight of their stories. Um, just watch that if you're someone who's interested interested in sports. Um, I think this will give a lot of perspective to the whole idea of mental illness, wanting to be tough, and being in this on spotlight, and how hard it is to speak about something that's as common as as human as stress, suffering from depression or bipolar or um, going through a traumatic um experience let's now see if we can kind of explain uh, and wrap it up um, by talking about what are different uh, reasons why uh, people behave uh, experience depression yeah a lot of nfl players have found that the concussion was one of the reasons why they clinically were diagnosed with depression uh, this is one of the basis of biological factors because uh, if you know you really hurt your brain that can have an impact in depression so there is something to do with the neurological connection there and uh, there is genetic link to uh, depression and um, bipolar as well a lot of studies have found clinical trials have found that um, you know depression 
uh, has runs through family uh, families as well so some factors to consider when we think about biological aspect uh, but this i think is very important for us to talk about a little bit which is learned helplessness a concept that seligman talks about how we get used to this whole idea of uh, of being depressed in some ways it, it is like a coping skill would take in um, and we get into that negative uh, thought of reference and that we go down through the downward spiral of it and it's hard for us to come out and we attribute every failure to something that's within and we take it too hard on ourselves and that makes it really worse and um, this leads us to talk a little bit more about suicide and the implications of suicide because when you feel extremely hopeless you just don't want to live you don't want to try you don't want to do anything and that's is one of the reasons why suicide is the highest among um, people who actually uh, experience depression and um, killing oneself um, is like an option that people feel that they are have nothing else other than just having to end their miserable life uh, we will talk about this in the next video